Good afternoon, you all. I'm Dulan Jayasekar from the Department of Zoology, University of Sri Jayawardenepura. And my supervisor is Professor Darshani Mahalputra. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Lali, the Bioconservation Society and the Rapid Foundation for providing this opportunity. And I'm going to do my presentation on the topic, modeling the distribution of herbicides and operates in three protected areas in different biodiversity zones of Sri Lanka. So this is uh, part of my PhD study. Uh, it was partially funded by Rafael Foundation. First of all, the introduction. Sri Lanka has 135 species of mammals as of 2019. So that is a, a good mammalian assemblage uh, considered uh, Sri Lanka as an island. In uh, 1993, Vijay Singh uh, proposed six biodynamic zones for Sri Lanka, depending on the topography, rainfall, uh, and the biotic assemblage. So uh, we selected uh, three of those zones, especially, uh, specifically three protected areas in, the, in three of those zones for our study. So our focus was on uh, mammals. So in Sri Lanka, there are 11 orders of which our focal group was in the uh, order carnivore. And specifically meso mammals, uh, which can be defined as medium sized mammals, uh, which are larger, larger than rodents up to uh, fox or jackal size. And uh, earlier Ashan uh, talked about uh, small cats. So I'm moving on to herbicides and weaverids, which are generally known as mongooses and uh, sivans. So this is our focal group. So when it comes to available information, uh, general descriptions and ecologies available starting from the early uh, 1900s and some taxonomic equations, abundance studies in Yala uh, and some studies in uh, Wilpato as well. However, they are important because they play key roles as predators, seed dispersers, as well as influences of uh, community structure. So they help regulate the uh, biodiversity and maintaining the biodiversity. And sometimes they are also considered as uh, carriers of diseases as well as agricultural pests. When it comes to research gap, yeah, uh, overall, in the bigger picture, we focused on all these areas. However, this uh, presentation will be on their distribution within the selected areas. So these are the mongoose species found in Sri Lanka, the gray mongoose, brandy mongoose, and the brown mongoose, and also the striped neck mongoose. And there are three civet species, the common palm civet, golden palm civet, and the small Indian civet, or the ring tail civet. And these are study sites, Madhuri National Park in the dry zone, Horn Plains National Park in the hill country, and Singharaja National Heritage Wilderness Area in the Lohan Lake Country Red right? Zone. So, uh, and we kind of started our study before the expansion uh, of the Singharaja area. And first, uh, we developed vegetation maps for each of the study sites using satellite image classification. And uh, most of our work was based on camera traffic. And we did, uh, employed uh, passive infrared motion triggered night vision cameras. Uh, which were with no or uh, low glow flash because uh, white, we didn't use the white flash, flashes because it would disturb the animals. And this is our camera step, set up in Madhurua, in Horton Plains, and in Singharaj. Uh, we followed these uh, procedures when deploying the traps, usually about 25 centimeters above the ground, attached to a tree, operating for about 30 days continuously. And uh, sometimes we had to take the different routes, uh, in, especially in Madhuri, we had to uh, go by water to approach some locations. And we used uh, our okay, uh, for, uh, presence and maxims of tests for the analysis, uh, especially for modeling. And uh, these are the covariates used, not all of these, but depending on the situation we selected, uh, variables that were not correlating to each other. And uh, again, the covariates, uh, we use the global databases as well as 
uh, what we developed here using the GIS procedures. And these are some raster maps used for the modeling. And uh, we followed the standard Maxine uh, modeling procedure. Moving on to the results and discussion. Uh, so this is the first result, the vegetation uh, types, categories, and the, their coverage in Madurai, uh, Horton Plains, and Singaraja. So these are updated maps uh, based on uh, recent image, satellite images. And uh, this is the trapping effort. Usually, uh, the trapping effort exceeded uh, 2,000 trap days at each site, and the effort depend varied uh, depending on the area of the protected area. So, to provide an idea about our observations, uh, this is uh, an elephant, a radium mongoose, and uh, probably a poacher in the night time period in the same camera trap, forest trap in Madhuruve. So this is the occupancy modeling. Uh, I'm not going to elaborate on this. I'm, I will be moving on to the graphical uh, presentations. And uh, when it comes to the spatial distribution of uh, herbest, it's the mongooses in Madhuruve. Uh, we develop distribution maps and the habitat suitability maps. And these are the predicted maps. So this area, the left flank of Madhuru is the area with the highest uh, coverage of uh, the climax driving several green forest. So this is the forested area. And the right flank is more or less decayed. So we observe most of the species in the left flank area. And they are suitable habitat areas also pause mostly in those um, parts of the park. So, especially the brown mongoose, which we identified as a forest species. So, it was present only in the forested area of the park. Whereas the ruddy mongoose uh, was more or less distributed throughout, uh, which preferred the rocky areas as well. And again, the striped neck mongoose, uh, another forest uh, species. It was also preferring the areas with uh, dense vegetation. So the suitable area vary, uh, especially the brown mongoose was observed uh, probably for the first time from the park. And uh, the area for the ruddy mongoose was larger. However, for the other two species, the suitable area was very low. These are the conditions uh, that uh, involved in determining their uh, occurrence probability. I'm not going to explain too much because the time is limiting. And uh, when it comes to beaver, it's the golden palm civet and uh, all three civet species are there. However, we could only model the golden palm civet and the ring tail civet because uh, the other two species were not very abundant. Other species, the common palm civet was not very abundant in uh, Madhuray. So the, again, uh, the golden palm civet was highly uh, the its distribution was very much uh, condensed in the forested areas. This species uh, uh, really need the presence of large trees. Uh, whereas the ringtail civet, it was more or less distributed throughout. It is a uh, terrestrial species, and the uh, golden palm civet can be considered arboreal. And uh, this is the brown mongoose in Madurai, and a family of civets, uh, the ringtail civets, captured in a camera, a mother uh, civet with uh, three cups. And here you can see the, pea, uh, the mother was feeding with her uh, young. And this is an observation of the golden palm civet. Uh, you can observe it, it is coming down from a large tree. So this the larger trees were very important for uh, their process. And I'm moving on to horn plains. Here, the two mongooses were present the brown mongoose and the striped neck mongoose. The largest in the country is the striped neck. Uh, both were very abundant uh, nearby the road and uh, road habitat edges. Uh, this is the particular area, and this is the Ohi area. The road comes from here and goes there. So, interestingly, these two species were more abundant uh, nearby the habitat edges. However, they 
required the presence of the cloud forest. So cloud forest was important again. <laughs> and I'm going on to Beaveridge, the golden palm cedar uh, in uh, Corn Place. This species was uh, distributed mostly in the forested areas, the Kirigalpot and the diagram sites. And again, the ringtail cedar, the terrestrial one, it was again in the uh, cloud forest edge. And this is an observation of the golden palm cedar uh, we recorded at uh, Horn Place. And moving on to Singharaj. In Singharaj, uh, we observed uh, the brown mongoose mostly in the sub mountain area near the uh, Moniside region. It was uh, kind of interesting because we expected it to be more common uh, throughout. However, it, it, uh, the, its prob uh, probable uh, distribution was more condensed towards the Moniside area. However, it was distributed in other parts as well. However, more probability was there in the morning set. And uh, this is the side mongoose, which is also a forest species. It, it was distributed throughout the park, uh, protected area. However, we observed that the lower dense evergreen forest, the, these are the forest areas which were locked. Uh, in the early time, and now they, these areas have gone under substitution. In this, these areas, the side mongoose was more common. Maybe uh, it's due to the ecological conditions generated by the uh, variety of plant species that uh, recolonize the areas. And this is the brown mongoose and the side mongoose. And again, the golden palm uh, we in Raja, unlike other two areas, uh, due to the uh, heavy vegetation, it was distributed throughout. However, again, the lower dense forest area was important for the golden palm cement as well. Maybe it is due to the presence of uh, more fruity species in this region and again, the uh, Moniside area. And this is the distribution map for the rain dense cement. And we identified some threats for this species, especially in Madhurve, uh, the fires by the borders. Usually, these are seasonal, especially set in the dry season before the rains. So they set fires and to attract, uh, uh, especially deer and other species for the emerging grasses are following the rains. Uh, actually, we, when we were uh, doing, doing our research, about uh, maybe about one third of the park was uh, on fire uh, for about one month. So it was uh, doing uh, heavy damages for the small species. And some road kills were observed, especially the Mahaya road that goes through the park. And we have, we have captured some activity of borders uh, as well, both uh, daytime as well as at night time. And in general, the encroachments and habitat loss was present in, uh, especially in Singaraj area and uh, maybe to some extent in Madhurve. In Horton Place, not much uh, external disturbances are visible except for the visitor pressure. 